I'll do it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Travis Sigley. I'm 22 years old, residing in San Francisco, California, and I'm here to talk about this cuddle therapy business I started. And we're off to a wonderful start. <laughs> cuddle therapy has been the most driving and inspiring experience of my life so far. It started as a professional endeavor about a year and a half ago when I started stripping for a living. About 80% of the clients that I saw, whenever they came in to see me, instead of wanting to objectify me and touch my body in ways that are more sexual than anything, a lot of them just wanted to cuddle. Uh, they would take me back into the private room, you know, get some one-on-one -on -one time with me, and just want to cuddle with me. They would spend half an hour and over $100 just to, um, just to touch me and, and be touched by me and to talk. Uh, after doing that for about a year, I decided to make this into a business and offer it to more people other than just uh, rich old gay men that come into strip clubs. Uh, it's a very tiny market and there are a lot more people than that that need cuddling. So six months ago, I started this, this cuddling business at the very end of uh, 2009. And it's been an incredible success in my eyes ever since. I've come across lots and lots of obstacles. There have been lots of people that have been vehemently against cuddle therapy and what it has to offer. But all of those make it worth pushing through and getting this uh, more widely understood, uh, recognized, and appreciated. I just want people to understand that touch can be available, can be comfortable, can be healing, and isn't something to be afraid of. Touch is something that is such a foundation for a loving, healthy life that I, I, I couldn't stress enough the necessity to communicate it. If you really develop the ability to communicate well, about touch especially, certain parts of your life just start to open up and you really recognize the world around you as something you're much closer to because you've physically felt it. It's not just something you're conceptualizing anymore. I was certainly not always this way. I was certainly not always a, a huge fan of cuddling and someone who had it in their everyday life. When I was growing up, I was moving around my whole life. My dad was in the Navy, so I developed very weak connections with friends in my childhood. I used to avoid people and not care about talking to them and just not really bother with developing any friendships or close relationships, seeing how I lose them every two years and most of them I never saw again. And it just kind of gave me a slightly jaded childhood. Nowadays, knowing that I will lose them gives me as much passion and drive to put the fullest amount of positivity and love out to them while I have the opportunity, while I have the chance to look them in the face and be present with them and show them how much I love them. I used to be really humble about giving people advice because I know we all have our own path and our own way of working with the world around us. But because I know this, it just kind of offers me the ability to tell people that. 
There's no one answer to do anything, and you'll never find it from anyone. If you ever really want to be the best person you can be, from my perspective, do what you love and share it with those around you. Because every single action we make in our life and every single interaction we have with people in our lives will change the world around us forever. If I sit down and have a really heart-opening and eye-opening conversation with someone, they're going to be able to take that new perspective and that new understanding about the world and take that with them for the rest of their life and share that with everyone else they come across. And that one person you have a conversation with will have a conversation with who knows how many people that day, the next day, the day after that. And all of those people will have a conversation with everyone in their life. And it, it's, it's just this huge chain of reactions. So in a way, every time you talk to someone, you're speaking to the world. And when I realized that and decided that I want to do the most that I can with it, I saw where I fit into it, what I love doing with my life, dancing, playing music, cuddling, offering love, offering a comfortable space for people to sit. I chose to do that, and I chose to partake in that every day of my life. I don't have all the answers to the world's problems, but I do know what does help people on a personal level, and I'm just trying to do that as much as I can.